Welcome back, it's another Friday, and today is a little bit of a gear review. And I say gear lightly because I don't think anything is about the gear you use. I think it's how you use what you have. So I'm gonna talk about what we use today. I don't think you have to use what we use. I think everybody has a phone in their pocket for the most part, and I think you can capture so much with your phone, and maybe I should be doing that more. Um, I get too caught up in the gear. I like gear and I like learning about new things and I like gear that makes my job easier. So a little caveat there, but if you're interested, keep watching. If not, uh, I appreciate you getting this far and let's get started. It's a little bit different video today. It's about gear. And I know if you're not into gear, this might not be your thing. So just go ahead and skip on by. I may show some footage in here too, but people ask me over the years, a lot of times what I use for gear. And first off, I'm a photographer primarily. We've made our living at, in photography for the last uh, 10, 15 years. Um, but recently in the last few years, I've been getting into video. So. Um, this is kind of from a video perspective, what we've been using here to make some of our videos. So it's something I'm learning about. And so from a beginner's perspective, this is kind of what I use. But from a photo perspective, what we use for 90% of our work is actually um, Nikon cameras. This is the D750 with the 50 millimeter. And this is what we use probably for 90% of our work. Um, it's a great, camera for weddings and it's small enough um, that you can travel with it. I've also got battery grips and things like that for our cameras back home just so we can have more power and I like a little bit bigger body when I'm actually working. But I find that the video, actually the photo quality in this is, is really good. The video is great too, minus the autofocus, which everybody knows if you've shot video using Nikon cameras in the past, they just haven't really cut it. But the camera, is great and I love the interface. So if you're in to cameras and interfaces, people that have used Nikon know that it is, is really user friendly. So I love it. And when I switched from film to digital, the people I was working with also shot Nikon so I could utilize their, lens, their lenses. So that's why I switched to Nikon and I've been with them ever since. But this last year, um, Nikon came out with another camera, the Nikon Z6, which um, this one's kind of decked out with everything that I use. <clears throat> but this camera I got the end of the year to travel with and mainly to do a lot more video with. And I have been absolutely 100% impressed with this camera. I got it with the stock 24-70 f4. So they didn't offer the 2.8 at the time I bought it. And it's a really compact lens. And I think for photo, it looks really good. Actually, I think the image sensor uh, megapixel wise, it's the same as the D750. So the image quality looks really um, comparable to this as far as the, the, the stills go. But the video quality is far beyond what this, what this could offer. And I'm not gonna go into all the specs and you can go read those on Nikon's website. It has in-body stabilization, and when you throw on this, the lens is specific for the mirrorless bodies, the S lenses, they are also stabilized. So you have five accesses. I also have the adapter, the F to Z adapter, so I can adapt um, the lenses. I, I brought here with me the 50, the 85, and the 35, so I can put those on the camera, no problem. I've had great success. I really haven't used them much because we've just been traveling around and it's just easier to keep one lens on. I don't have to worry about sand, getting in the body, all that. But this lens for video is really great. It's wide enough that we can, you know, vlog with it. You know, I have enough zoom here that I can, you know, capture some things, some tight shots, some details, some macro as well. Really impressed with this. Uh, the autofocus is really great. I primarily use a couple settings in here for video. It's the autofocus, full-time focus with the wide area large, and I can move that around the entire screen and it snaps into focus really quick. So again, I don't have a lot to compare it to because I'm coming from a camera that had no autofocus for video 
to a camera that has full-time autofocus. So this is, is really no comparison, but a friend of mine was um, looking at the, the Sony, one of the Sony cameras and we're kind of comparing side by side. And I feel like the Nikon was keeping up minus the eye, eye autofocus and all that. So that hopefully they'll fix, but I think Sony obviously has an edge over that. But for a vlogging setup, what we use and kind of our our setup here for all of the videos, basically I'm kind of using the Rode Video Mic uh, Micro right here with the, with the dead cat. And I've been impressed with this too. We've been on the beach, it's been really windy and this cuts out a lot of the noise. It doesn't have the reach that maybe some of the other shotgun mics do, but it has enough, I think, that it sounds okay. So I just mounted on here and if you haven't known about it, this little clip in the back of this actually holds your cord so it keeps this thing from bouncing around. I just wrap it around here and it goes into the mic port. Another thing I like about the Nikon cameras is the weather sealing. Um, all these ports are pretty well sealed when, it, when you have them closed and then when you have them open, they actually open from the bottom to the top. So if you have any water or anything, it's going to go down instead of kind of opening the other way and you can only really open the ones that you, you want to use. So I'm just using the mic there. Everything else is buttoned up nice and tight. Um, we have gotten this sprayed on with, with ocean water and some rain water and haven't had any issues. So that's really good. The other feature I like about this is the touchscreen. Uh, fully functional touchscreen in all the menus. And that is, um, that is a definite plus for me. And let's see, what else do we use? Uh, I use the Joby, I don't, this isn't the largest one. It's kind of the, the next to largest one. And I actually threw a Peak Design because I use Peak Design clips and straps for all my things. I threw a Peak Design capture clip onto here and the arc swiss plate here because my tripod that i'm using right now filming with my iphone is arc swiss so this just mounts onto here and i can easily take it on and off without having to unscrew the thing and i still have my good mount and i still have my capture or my uh, peak design whatever you call that thing attached there so i can use my strap <clears throat> Peak Design strap, which I use all the time. But I've taken this everywhere with me, even to the beach, and so far so good. Um, it stayed really clean, and yeah, I'm super impressed with it. Uh, the other thing that I'm, I'm impressed with in some degree, but not completely, is the one card slot. It is an XQD card, so it's a better form factor, but there's only one, and if you read any reviews, you've heard the complaint but it reads and writes super fast. The downside is the price, and the downside is also I heard that these are discontinued from Sony, but other companies are starting to make these, so we'll have to figure that out. As far as would I use this for a full-time photo camera, I'm not there yet, you know? I'm really impressed with the focus system in this camera, and you know, it's the same, it's better in the, in the D850s and the D5 and things like that. But this one does really well. I'm, I've, I've been using it for a long time and um, it works for me. So they've changed a couple things in the focus system with this, especially with the 3D tracking and the continuous focusing. I'm just not that familiar with it yet. And I also like seeing, even though the electronic viewfinder is great in here, I really just like, you know, looking through the lens with the uh, with the mirror and I don't know something about that I I'm just quicker at I don't know seeing what I want to take a photo of although setting exposure and everything like that in camera is a huge plus the other thing we use here is this ND filter um, this is a variable it's not an expensive one but it's a tin stop I can um, you know really stop things down and daylight so I can shoot at a lower shutter speed and all that so it keeps things looking nice and smooth. I haven't shot much in 4K. I really don't have a use for the 4K, although this does shoot in 4K. And maybe if I were to do some other types of films, I would probably do that. And if you attach the Atomos Ninja or something like that, you can actually shoot in 10-bit. Otherwise, it's in 8-bit. So I've just been shooting at 1080, either 24 frames a second or 120 which I think the 120 looks really great. Again, I don't have a lot to compare to, but I think it's, it's pretty great for what we're using it for. 
as far as color goes, I'm just using, I think, the standard color. I'm not even shooting in the different color profiles or shooting in a flat, although I can, and I think that's better to do. I just don't have really time to go through and color correct everything. So I'm doing auto white balance for the most part and just the standard color. And I think it looks pretty good 90% of the time. Um, and it saves me time afterward when I'm kind of doing things in post. The other thing that I'm using right now is this Zoom H1. I kind of carry this with me when we travel because it's great to always capture audio if I really need to, oh, with some music or things like that. I haven't used it much on this trip, but I am using it now with this lav mic, so it might sound a little bit different. Hopefully my levels are okay. But again, audio is something that I'm learning and I'm not really proficient at any Thing quite yet, but I'm getting there. I also have the H5 with me with some other lav mics. So you never know whenever an interview might pop up or you wanna have something that's a little more robust than just this little guy. But that's what we have there. Of course, I'm traveling with MacBook Pro 15 inch 2018 model. It's working great. The other thing that I have is the GoPro Hero Black. And again, I have this little Joby tripod here. This has been super helpful just even just walking around with, thing, I, with this thing, I jump in the ocean with it, jump in the pool with it. I'm not really afraid to damage it. It's useful. So I can set this up to do time lapses or hang out at the beach with it. This is kind of our setup. And then right now I'm actually filming on my iPhone uh, 10s through the Moment app. And I have a couple Moment lenses, the 58 millimeter and the macro, which are great. We've had a lot of fun with those. Uh, filming with the 58 millimeter through that app, it looks really nice. When I don't have this camera, I wanna get a little bit more zoom. I just keep those with me all the time and it's, it's super solid. I'm also filming with the, I have the Gitzo tripod, but it's a carbon fiber and it's really light and packs up really small so I can throw it in my suitcase. And we always need a tripod. We always need family photos. I always travel with the tripod and I'll list all of these items and the links below if you wanna check them out. I have more gear, obviously, but this is kind of what I found, what I use every day. This is what I have. And check it out. Go watch the rest of our videos because they were all filmed for the most part with this camera. And I forgot to mention, I also have uh, the DJI Mavic Air, which I'm a, a kind of a novice flyer. It's windy a lot here. And I'm just nervous to get it up in the air when it's really windy. I get those wind warnings and um, it scares me. So yeah, I don't know. That's what we have. Uh, a little gear talk. So if you want more info or interested about more what we use, there can be more videos of that for sure. Yeah, a little brief over you. Have a good weekend, have a good week, and we'll see you next Friday. We're in bio to lead. About to hit up this cenote. It's in the center of town. Well, you excited? It's pretty deep, huh? Ready? We're gonna count, ready? One, two, three, you gotta jump, okay? One, two, three. Float on your back.